without trial for a long time. Kenyans were being clobbered by police, being arrested, blindfolded, taken up to Nile House, dropped from, from the third floor onto the streets to their death, and then they will say that you committed suicide. People could never dream of carrying out any kind of demonstrations. It was outlawed, the demonstrations. But we demonstrated, and eventually, after very heavy price paid by people of Kenya, we got a new constitution. That new constitution has been built as one of the best constitutions in the world in terms of human rights provisions section of that constitution. The constitution that guarantees the right to do what you want to do, the right to picket, the right to petition, the right to demonstrate. It's all enshrined in the constitution. If there is something that you don't like, you have a right to demonstrate. People are demonstrating all over the world. They're demonstrating in France. They're demonstrating in Israel. They're demonstrating in Australia. They've been demonstrating in Senegal. Yet in Kenya, somebody proposed to criminalize demonstrations. That is, demonstrators are going to destroy properties of other Kenyans. They were saying they are going to destroy properties of other Kenyans. You ask yourself, what properties do you destroy in Uganda? What property do you destroy in Kibera? What property are you destroying in Madari? Which property are you destroying in Sondu? Which property are you destroying in Migori? These are basically excuses to kill Kenyans in cold blood. And you must say no. Somebody goes and then prides himself, places the policeman when he's talking to another part of the country, stealing political propaganda. That, oh, Mr. Akalian Gum, Mr. Akalian Gum, he, Azamiona, Otamiona, Mr. Akanyaga, Mr. Akanyaga. Because you've killed innocent people, you're going, you're going to shout at the top of your voice in another part of the country and, and you're purporting to be a leader of a country. Every life must, must count. And then you're obsessed with saying, oh, my, my next responsibility is to take Raila to Bondo. Raila knows how to get to Bondo. <laughs> I don't mean you don't have to take me to Bondo. But what is done is criminal. These people's hands are full of the blood of innocent Kenyans. Innocent Kenyans. And that is why we are all very emotional about this. And this is not something that should be allowed to pass away. We have said that Kenyans are right. People have reason to go to the streets. People are not mad to go to the streets merely because Raila said go to the streets. They are going there because of their good reason to do so. They are talking about high cost of living. They are talking about high taxation. They are talking about education for their children. They are talking about electoral justice. All these are very fundamental issues that Kenyans are raising against this regime. And therefore we say that this regime must stand condemned in the strongest terms possible with all civil as man, by, by mankind. We will not be cowed. And I'll say that people don't have to come to the streets. There are many other different ways of protesting. We can ask the people to stay home and don't go out the street to be shot by police. And next time, we're not going to ask people to go out in the street. We tell them, can you marry? And people will stay home. They will not go to work. Mr. Ruto does not own Kenya. It does not own Kenya. It does not own Kenya. And with Ruto, Kenya that is not consists of only two tribes. Kenya consists of 46 tribes. 
even those who did not vote, vote for Kenya Kwanzaa are Kenyans and are taxpaying Kenyans and they have a right to demand services from the government. So we will not allow you to play the